Welcome to the Adapt Podcast, a podcast for executive leaders looking to be successful in the digital age. Get practical tips from successful leaders and listen as digital movers and shakers talk about how they transformed companies into the digital era. Here is your host, Luis Gonzalez. Welcome to another episode of the Adapt Podcast. Today, I have my good friend, Nuno Morgadinho. Nuno is the CEO and founder of Ouija Labs. Nuno, welcome to another show, man. Thank you so much for having you here. It's a pleasure to have such a nice guy that knows how to turn all companies around to the digital era. Thank you so much, Nuno. It's a pleasure Thank to you. have you here. Thank you very much for the invitation again, and thanks for having me. Cool, no, no. Just uh, for our audience to understand a little bit about yourself and what you do, could you please give us a, a little bit about uh, your background so that we know uh, with whom are we talking to? Sure. So uh, I, I've studied computer science, and uh, after graduation, uh, I worked for a company uh, called Wide Dreams here in Portugal for f up to a year, and then uh, I moved to Germany where I lived two years and I was working there for a contract company, a contractor company for the European Space Agency. And uh, after that, after two years there, uh, I moved back to Portugal and, and started my, my current company, which is uh, Ouija Labs. And it's a digital agency uh, specializing in WordPress development. And uh, within Ouija Labs, we've, we have national and international clients. Uh, we, we, we do everything around WordPress. So websites, e-commerce, uh, also marketplaces, e-learning, everything you can imagine around WordPress, we, we do it. And, um, and we've been lucky enough to work with some strong brands already. So Forbes, uh, Vodafone, um, and others. And, and here in Portugal, we've been... Uh, part of the team that launched Observador.pt, which is a, a famous digital newspaper here in Portugal, and also followed that we, uh, following that, we we launched Echo.pt, which is another digital newspaper, but more focused on the economic uh, side of things. But as an agency, we're always working with different clients. You know, it's uh, Sometimes we're doing a bikini e-commerce shop <laughs> <laughs> and the next week we're doing maybe an insurance, more serious uh, thing and, uh, and also working with startups. So we've, we've worked, for example, with Uniplaces. We did uh, their, their first prototype was done with us uh, using WordPress. And then with that, they were able to uh, win a competition that, that was happening at the time, which was called Startup Weekend. Mm -hmm. And after that, they kind of proved the, the market a little bit and were able to raise their initial uh, seeds money. And, and they're now an international uh, case study. So th they threw away the prototype and started the platform they have now, which is all uh, in-house made, etc. But the prototype served yes, it, its yes, purpose. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and so we have this experience of, of running websites with millions of page views, like, like Observador and, and, and the newspapers. And our team is developers and, and designers. And uh, our, uh, our focus, our core, our mission is, is really the, the web. We are just uh, passionate, very passionate about the internet awesome. and, and internet-enabled uh, businesses. Awesome. So you are the right guy to, to be in this podcast. So starting with, with the first question. So you, you, you develop or helped customers to develop a, a lot of websites to, to, for them to, to be more present in the digital era. So I, I want to start this podcast asking you, what is digital era for you? I think, I think for me, digital era has to do with, uh, you know, the explosion of the internet uh, usage, uh, mainly through the use of smartphones and also social networks uh, at the global scale, you know, and this has resulted in a you know exponential uh, growth for uh, for e-commerce and, and and business in general uh, throughout the world, right? And so. Uh, I think the, the biggest disruptions we're seeing in the traditional uh, businesses are uh, fueled by the digitalization. And, and I think what we're seeing is they're impacting the, the client experience, the user experience. So I was 
just now recently chatting with, with one of my students because I, I also teach a few classes at the university. And, you know, we were discussing just how simple it is today, for example, to open a bank account through your smartphone in, in 15 minutes. Uh, and comparing that with just a few years ago where you had to present all this documentation, you had to go in person, you had to uh, you know, uh, prove you, you, you had an address, etc. And that's all been simplified. And really the benefit is for the user. So the, the client experience, the user experience is being very, very impacted. And so for me, the digital age has to do with that through a completely different uh, client experience. It's just in the way uh, brands communicate with, with consumers, in the way transactions are made, uh, in the way we relate with brands and, and companies. Um, there's just many, many aspects to it. But I think that the main thing is, is this. Awesome. Okay. So you, you have been helping a lot, a lot of companies. And one, one of the things that I would love and I always uh, like to, to understand is, uh, from your point of view, what are the biggest challenges that the traditional business are now facing uh, when the digital age is here? So what, what do you think that they are the biggest difficulties they will face and that they will, they will have to take into consideration in their business? I, th I think it's just, uh, I, I think one of the main challenges is just understanding what's going on. You know, there's, there's so much going on. There's so much um, complexity in the world right now. But if, if we try to, to simplify it in, in a way, I would say what we're seeing is acceleration through technology, right? So there's, there's a few Uh, technologies that are allowing businesses to accelerate uh, in terms of innovation and, and just general business growth. Uh, and those are, for me, uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, but also in the Internet of Things, but also black blockchain, virtual reality, big data cloud, API, so, so many things, right? So I think there's, there's a challenge there, which is to just understand what's going on and how to take advantage of that for your own business, you know, for your own teams. Um, and, and in a way that has to do with how can you become um, excellent, in a way technologically excellent, because every business is now also a, tech, a technological business, right? But there's, um, there's obviously some, some constraints to that. You, you cannot, uh, it's difficult to hire good tech talent. Um, and, and I think traditional businesses have a few um, friction in, in, in becoming technological in, in, in some way. So, but I think that's the only way forward. We, we've seen already the main, the, the top, the most valuable companies in the world uh, are, are the technological companies. And, and that's, that's for a reason, right? And they've already surpassed all those traditional businesses, uh, industries that, that we uh, associated with money, you know, oil, uh, insurance, uh, yeah. tobacco companies, all, all of those uh, The, the most valuable ones are now technological companies, right? And, and so that should be, that gives us a sign of where the world is, is heading and, and where we should focus as well. So help me here. So if, if, um, if you are a, a CEO of a company that uh, is not really a technological company, talk about tobacco, you talk about so many other Other, other areas. So if, if you are a CEO of a company that is not a traditional technology company, what is a, your advice for them? So how, what can they start doing in order to bring their organization further into, into the digital age so that they can adapt and basically survive and nourish in, in this new, new era? So <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like to be moralizing uh i don't like to moralize people mm -hmm. but i think one of the challenges we have uh is well a little bit here in portugal but also in europe is uh many ceos are uh too much into the operational side of the business rather than leaving the operation for someone responsible for it and and, and thinking more strategically mm -hmm. and so uh 
if you're already doing that, I think the next step is to really educate yourself <laughs> on, on, on what is happening. Uh, and, and also, um, I mean, most, most CEOs will already be thinking independently and, and thinking by themselves, which is great. But also, it's, I think it's very important to uh, continue doing that uh, when it comes thinking about what technologies to deploy, what channels to explore, etc. Because there's also many, many information uh, being stormed at, at CEOs and, and companies uh, of where they should focus on. Yes, it's true. And, 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 and the problem is when someone tells you, and, and we've, we've chatted about this before, when, someone, when, when a CEO tells you, uh, we need to go, for example, um, we want to focus in product, right? That, that's something we hear a lot as well. We, we want to build a product. And then, okay, but why do you want to build a product? You know, and, 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 and people are in a way saying, well, because everyone is, is telling us that that's the way to move forward, that that's, that's the secret in a way. Um, and so I think we have to get past that and, and think strategically on how we're going to achieve what, what we plan to achieve. And um, it, it's not easy. It, but I don't think there's there's a formula. There's there's yeah. no there's no a trick for it, right? Um, but there's definitely a, a, a big opportunity uh, when it comes to to this global market we now have. Cool. So I would like to to use utilize your experience. So you, you talk with a lot of companies in Europe and Portugal. From your point of view, what are the the biggest barriers that executives uh, pose to you in order to 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 really go into this direction, to go into digitalization, to really thinking a little bit about all these technologies that you really talked. So I'm pretty sure that you are trying to build some really nice websites that are kind of a platform for them, or it's a, it's a channel for them to really access to the digital age. But I'm pretty sure that Of course, the ones that come to you and, and, and they ask your help, they are ready in the next level, let's say. And uh, so they, they understood. But I'm pretty sure that you uh, encounter as well people that are still not yet at the level that they need to take the next step. So I really would love so that you could share uh, with us some of the barriers, some of the um Yeah, the excuses, let's say, that some of your uh, leads, potential customers share with you so that you could actually utilize or we could utilize that knowledge into our audience so that some people could say, oops, maybe I'm doing this or maybe I'm doing that. So maybe I should think in a different way. So could you share with us some of the barriers that people talk with you and they mean that they they think maybe mm, we still don't need this we our business works pretty nicely we don't need this fancy digital stuff so well um I, I, something that that happens to us uh, is normally when when we first talk with with clients uh they, they have this idea of what they want to do but they're not seeing the whole picture of, of how mm -hmm. of how it can be. Uh, and so they're either thinking about a small part like the website, but they're not thinking about their whole digital ecosystem, what they yeah. need to have in place for the website to be an asset for them as, as a, a business asset in, in this case, right? So what we try to do is kind of educate them uh, towards that. Look, the website is great that you're thinking about this, but there's other like cogs on the machine that you need to get working as well. So this becomes an asset and not a liability or, or a cost for, for just a cost for, for the yeah, business. Yeah, because the, the website is, is just a channel, right? The, the website is just a small tool to achieve the big picture, right? It's not the, a lot of people think that, okay, we have a website, now we are digital, right? And, and that's, that's quite <laughs> far exactly. away from the truth, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so, so you need all, all, all different cogs and you need also someone that knows how to take advantage of, of, of the digital, uh, of the internet, how, how it works. So, and, and I, I think I would say two things where, where I think people are, are kind of, uh, 
making a, a misstep somehow. But one of them is thinking they know how things are going to pan out, how things mm-hmm. are going to work. You know, many times clients come to us and they say, uh, I'm planning to do this and that. And, uh, and, and when we approach them and say, are you interested in, in, in testing that out? You know, making a prototype, see if it converts or not, or, or do some adjustments. Uh, normally people, many clients at least, they, they kind of uh, uh, push refuse back. that, push back and say, no, you know, we're already convinced this is, this is what, what we need. Uh, <laughs> many times even we, without having any data. But as humans, we're afraid of being wrong. You know, and and people telling us we're wrong, uh, and so we get a bit emotional about that. Uh, when in fact we should kind of be open uh, about that. We should say, actually, you're right. I don't have any data to support this yet. So maybe that's a good that that's a good approach if we can test and 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 see how it pans out, or if we need to adjust something. Uh, and and the second aspect is uh, understanding how the digital marketing side of things will work. So besides having the website, you'll probably need either ads or organic uh, SEO to to bring traffic to your website. So the two main channels we have today are uh, for website traffic, are social networks, which is uh, a thing, right? And and uh, search engines, which yeah. 90% of the market is, is Google or more. And, and so we, we have to know how to work those two engines very well in order to, 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 to take advantage of it. Um, and then I think, uh, I think many times uh, as businesses where uh, and, and CEOs are, are doing this a little bit, which is we are not so limited as we think we are. So, for example, uh, as a CEO, you might be thinking, oh, I have a small structure uh, and we don't have enough resources to maybe work on this new initiative, you know, or we don't have enough budget to, to invest in this new technology or, um, or some other excuse, right? Mm-hmm. And so we, we kind of tend to get stick on those excuses and many times what's uh, preventing business growth is is just lack of initiative rather than lack of knowledge or lack of knowing what to do is more lack of initiative, lack of action, you know, um, at least that that's my feeling. And, uh, from my point of view, from, from my customers, I believe as well that uh, a lot of executives still do not see what is coming now with COVID. Uh, I, I think COVID was was a huge event that happened. I, I talk about this many times, and I, I even say it on my on my latest book that for me COVID it's um, it will be remembered in few years as the the beginning of the digital age. It's my opinion. So Ford was kind of uh, named the beginning of the industrial era. I truly believe in a couple of years. 10, 20 years or even more, people will look back to COVID-19 and believe this is the beginning. It was the beginning of the digital era. And I I have these conversations many times with a lot of people. And I I believe that one of the big issues is, and I discussed here as well on this podcast, that a lot of the executives, they are over 50s, not all, but a lot of them, they're over 50s. and, and, And they did a lot of really good stuff in the past. Right. So now it's a matter of, for them to kind of relearn everything, right? And the pace that the companies were working some years ago, it's not the same pace as we are working today. So I, I think a lot of people is still thinking, oh, we still have time, we still have time. But I really believe that, um, I'm very excited because I truly believe that after this COVID-19 um, is gone, society will really change tremendously. Companies will change the way how they operate the through digitalization. Ways of working will change and companies will become much, much faster than, than before. And the ones that will not be able to adapt, they will simply die. There is no, no question about it. But I, I really think that one of the biggest challenges that organizations face or leaders face is the fact that they need to relearn a lot. And, and and they need to keep themselves quite updated. And and it's not easy because 
from my point of view, it's not anymore uh, a process change. It's a completely mindset change. And those are the hardest ones because what you were doing in the past does not work anymore in the current uh, scenario. And basically you need to relearn everything, how you run a company and how you manage everything. And I think that's, that is extremely, extremely difficult. But okay, we talked a lot about the, the yeah, we entered already a little bit um, into this topic, but we talk about the, the, the challenges and you talked a little bit about the marketing as well that it, it, you really need to think. And I think marketing the digital era, it's a completely different monster, I would say. But uh, from your point of view, tell me, what are the biggest opportunities that digital age gives to leaders and gives to, to organizations? I mean, for, for me, the, the biggest opportunity is uh, just accessing the, the global markets. Um, and so if we look at, at, uh, at the latest data, let's say, uh, we can see that, um, for example, Asia already has, uh, I think, 2,000 uh, million people on the internet, but they're only at... 48% of the population. So they still have almost another 50%. Uh, you know, the second half of their po population is not yet connected to the internet. And so in the next few years, what we're going to see uh, is, is they're going to add another 2,000 million to, to the internet. And yeah. if you compare that, for example, with the United States, it's very different. You have, I think, 700 uh million people but that already corresponds to 98 or 99 percent so everyone has internet already and, and and is using it so there's not a lot of space to, to grow there but in asia in africa in in other places there's there's still a lot of uh, growth to happen and we're going to see that in, in the next few years and when you think about that this is already the, the biggest market we uh, ever had but it's also it's going to become even bigger, right? And so I think the biggest challenge is, is not get trapped by local uh, uh, local optims, local um, uh, maximums, where yeah. you have, because, you, for example, here in Portugal, you also have good opportunities here in Portugal, yes. right? But it's it's difficult to say, no, I'm not going to take this opportunity, even though it's good, because I can see there's a bigger opportunity uh, at the global level, right? And so uh, there's obviously different strategies to, to cope with that and, and to approach that. But, but I think, for me, it's the biggest opportunity is just accessing that, that global market and, and be operating at, at the global uh, level. Um, I actually share, completely share your idea because yeah. one of the reasons why, one of this is the reasons why I came back to Portugal after so many years being abroad is, is because I truly believe that we, our culture has a tremendous imagination. You know, we see from the discovery styles, what times, was 500 years ago, but Portuguese went went to the world to explore. Um, our culture is, is 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 in that sense. I think we are adventurers and we have a lot of imagination. So I truly believe we have the imagination to do great products. And for many 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 years, I heard that saying Portuguese economy is very weak because we our market is very small. Even if I I never thought that was an excuse because if you think about Sweden and Finland. They are countries with much less or the market is much smaller than ours. They still were able to do a lot of good stuff. But still, today, I truly believe where Portuguese can really shine away from, from, from this small market is using the digitalization and the global, global market. Right. And a lot of people is asking me, hey, you come back to Portugal, the market is so small here. Why did you come back to Portugal? And say, yeah, because I came back to Portugal because of the wine, food, friends and, and the beach. Right. Because my entire market is the world. And, and this digital leadership accelerator that we, we are starting is, is an example how we are basically creating all content in English because we actually want to 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 tackle or or being the giving the possibility to to be an entire world. Imagine a very small company um, 
accessing the entire world. And I think this is what Portugal can can do as well. We are a very small company, country, sorry. But I truly believe that now we have the imagination, the culture to be seen as a, as a reference in, in, in the world because we are not anymore the small country here, uh, the, the, the last or the first country in Europe, right? So we have the entire world for us to grow and to, to leave a mark. Yeah, I think there's there's a a, a balance to be to be made because uh, in in, ter- in technological terms and in engineering terms, we we have very good engineers and, mm-hmm. and technical people. And it's funny when when I moved to Germany, uh, I kind of realized this, which which was we have so many talents across the world, you know, right? We have you know Portuguese engineers working at Facebook, Google, uh, all those major tech companies, which which proves we have good good talent. Engineers, yeah. Uh, but there seems to be a a, a thing where uh, if the Portuguese go to work outside, they they go, they go to work abroad. They they kind of uh, somehow they stop relying or thinking uh, the government has to support them in some way, and and they. They they grow from that and and they um, how can I say this they 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 expand what's possible right and so I think one one thing I, I see is that when we uh, Portuguese engineers go abroad we 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 make things happen and and we grow from that uh, and so there's really no uh, obstacle in uh, living here or living some other place and, and, and doing entrepreneurship and, and building a global business. Yeah, and the support is a bit different in Portugal and outside of countries. Um, so, and, and I don't think, um, or let me rephrase it, I truly believe that the leadership plays pay, plays a, a huge role. Um, and we have great leaders in Portugal, but I still believe that we, we have a lot to do in that area. So when we go abroad, and I was an example 15 years abroad, when you are abroad and you get good strategy on what you need to do, then it's very easy for you to deliver as an engineer. In Portugal, we are very good in what we call in Portuguese zenrasca, meaning doing something just to get stuff done, but the strategical part is missing completely. And and that's a, a, a tricky part. And this is actually one of my dreams, is actually able to to bring this Zenrashka culture plus the methodology, the systematic way of Germans to do the things, because this is something that I improved a lot myself in Germany, the the, the, the systematic yeah. way of doing things plus my my Portuguese culture of getting stuff done. It's it's really good. And this is one of the things that I want I want to bring to Portugal. And I think it's fantastic if we would be able to to do this. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So let me just add, tell me, let, tell let, me. Let, let, let me just add a small thing to that, which is as as humans we cannot see our own blind spots, right? Yes. We cannot see what we can't see, right? And so we kind of need someone uh from the outside to to point us at what we're not seeing. And so uh w- one of the things uh that I think we, we're not seeing as as Portuguese uh people. Uh, especially those that haven't gone abroad and and seen other things and and had other uh, similar experiences to to what we had, is that we're as good as the other guys. You know, uh, the engineers at Google or Amazon are not better than the ones we have here, right? And and once you understand that, then um, I sky, think the sky is limit. <laughs> the sky is the limit, right? The sky is the limit. And I think I definitely think one of the problems uh, you mentioned is is correct. So thinking strategically, but also uh, trusting trusting ourselves, knowing yeah. what we can do. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Noon, tell me something. Um, we will. We all went through this COVID. We are still going through this COVID. Um, what did change for you and for your business? Uh, during these crazy times that we are living, did it grow? Did it shrink? How? How? Wh- what did it happen? So what what happened to us was uh, when COVID started, we had we we had 
a few leads that uh, that went away just because people were, you know, suddenly uh, with a different focus and, and and trying to figure out what what was going to happen. But also we've seen with with some of our clients, uh, especially in e-commerce and e-learning, uh, they they actually grew from this. So they yeah. they started seeing more more orders uh, and more clients, and and so they ended up contracting us more or asking asking us for more allocation and so that balanced things a, a little bit and uh and we're a small company right so uh we're always at the distance of uh at one client distance of either dying or being very well yeah. you know uh but things are are very st- are stable for us at the moment we've we we have a few good clients that we're working with, and I think what what changed during COVID was uh, obviously all communication now is online. All the meetings are online. All all the work part is also online. Luckily, we, we already had the processes in place to to do remote working. So uh, we do you know daily scrums, uh, code reviews, etc. We, as a tech company, we already had those processes in place that allow remote work to to happen effort, effortlessly, in a way. So, um, so to be honest, not much has changed for us. Uh, I'm I'm a bit reluctant to say this, but I feel that's actually uh, the the truth. Uh, obviously, we're having more meetings online. All of them are online. But apart from that, it's business as usual. Uh, we're uh, we're growing, so yeah. Good. So you you were lucky to be in the digital digital business. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously, obviously, we're, we're so very. I, I'm very grateful for that because uh, you know many businesses are are struggling at the moment. Things things are closing, uh, and we we're just very very lucky to be on this uh, technology sector which which is obviously not not as much uh, uh, impacted as as others cool so i have two more questions for you for for this show today what is or what was the biggest lesson that you received during your entire career that you want to share with our audience well i I'm not sure if it's a lesson or or an insight or or how you want to call it, but uh, something that uh, impacted me was in this this one time I was in in Germany with with a friend, and we were uh, outside. Actually, we were in a garden and we were practicing martial arts because mm-hmm. at the time I, I, I was training martial arts, and so we were there practicing. And after that, we we kind of ended up chatting one. Uh, with one another and it was funny because or it was interesting because uh, uh, talking with him i i understood he he was actually uh going through a, a dark phase you know he was actually unemployed at the moment uh, a bit struggling uh what to do next um and and he kind of had this dark gloom around him in in, in a way and actually, I was totally in the opposite side. I I was so happy at the moment. Very, uh, I just had started working by myself, so I was pretty much uh, fulfilled. Uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, full of vitality and energy. And I was seeing everything in, in the opposite way. I was seeing everything light, you know, instead of dark. But actually, we were there face to face with each other on the same place you know in the same surroundings the same sunlight the same people around us etc and my my what what struck me was how how can this be you know how can two people who are exactly in the same place in the same environment uh both healthy etc but so so much feeling different different things right and um, I, I think I, I kind of understood that it's it's up to us uh, in a way to to deal with that, right? And we can either we're always um, moving either towards or afar a, a from from that dark and that light, right? But it's up to us to 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 do that. Uh, 
Um, and so I'm not sure if it's a lesson or well, like I said, insight. an insight. I think I think it's important to always understand where the other person might be at the moment as well. So we always try to do that. I always try to do that with my clients as well. Uh, and um, yeah, and generally just push through it yeah, in a way. Awesome. So the last one to close the show. What is your advice for leaders that are starting their career or a little bit more specifically for, for this show, leaders that are trying to move their companies to the digital age? What what are the advices that you have for those guys that are struggling and they are trying to move into this new world? You know, whenever we we try to provide uh, advice, uh, it's it's difficult to to avoid the cliches, mm -hmm. right? The, those common phrases. But I think one important bit is uh, obviously to 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 think independently and think for yourself. And uh, something I read recently about uh, Plato, Plato and Socrates. Mm -hmm. Uh, where Plato, one of his rules, one of his principles, uh, principles for leaders was to avoid what he called doxa. And doxa is all the, the common sense stuff, right? What everyone is telling you, it's common you should sense. be doing, yes. right? And, 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 and now we have a lot of that. We have all, all the gurus online uh, uh, kind of throwing things at you. Uh, different courses, different options, different people, different ads, etc. So, so much thing being thrown at us, and we we have to obviously we have to be critic of, of of that. And first of all, understanding what we need as as a leader, right? So, um, and I, for me, that that is just reflecting, writing, and arriving at my own conclusions. Um, And, and it's something I've I've also I'm all, I'm also learning how to do uh, each day better. Uh, but once once you, I, I would sum it up as kind of educate yourself and and reflect and think independently. Um, I, I think that's very important because the the next step after that is if you educate yourself, you can then start to educate the market, and that's where you become valuable. To the market, right? So you you go maybe work for a company. If you're educated, you can educate other people, and and it can elevate the entire organization. That's true. Yeah. Uh, and as a CEO, the same thing. If you're educated, you can you know hire the right people to maybe come in and help educate and 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 uh, uh, raise the whole organization to to another level. So. Uh, And especially because I'm a parent, I, I think I, I, I have to say this, which is uh, as parents, we cannot uh, educate our, our kids if we're not educated ourselves. Mm. You know? How can I recommend a book if I haven't read the book? Yep. You know? Or how can I uh, explain how to approach life if I haven't all that much explored life in, in some way? So um, it, it's important to to do that. To cool. And, and 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 if I would if I would get your advice now, so focusing a little bit on 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 the on the digital part. So imagine that uh, I am a guy that wants to start. Uh, I'm a very traditional. Let's think. Uh, let's think about shoe manufacturing or textile or any traditional business that would like to come to you. So. I want to go into the digital era. What what the heck should I do? Where should I start um, to bring my my business into into a completely different stage? Excellent question. So my my preferred approach uh, these days uh, to to answer that question is I would call it scorecard your industry. Yep. Where where you look at your industry and you see and you think of a scale of one to ten and you think who's at one and who's at 10, right? Which okay. companies are at level one and which companies are at level 10? And then where is mine? Where do I fit in that scale at the moment? Mm -hmm. And how do I help clients go 
from from level one to level ten in, in my industry, right? So, um, and for example, for for a shoe company, I think it, it, there's there's other considerations to to be made, but. Uh, what what people want is is not so different from industry to industry. Right? Mm-hmm. So as humans, we, we we have those basic needs of, you know, variety, certainty, uh, growth, meaning, etc. Um, I, I think the correct answer would be to to hire professionals to to work with you and to help you leverage uh, digital. I, I think that's that's the correct answer. But there's definitely a lot to be to be said about that. Yes, I I agree. I think a lot of one of the biggest mistakes of companies is basically trying to do all the transformation by themselves without uh, experienced persons that were able to do it in the past. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes organizations do it do do today. Yeah. Not, not. Because I mean you wouldn't hire a personal trainer who's uh, you know who's not fit, right? Yeah. And so what I think what distinguishes professionals uh, is that professionals have achieved the result you're looking for. Yes. Right before. So you, you have to to take into consideration that that criteria, you know, yeah. you have to ask that question: Have they achieved the result I'm looking for? Um, and, and and not just look at price or or some other factor as yeah. as, as the key buy uh, buying criteria. Yeah, I think I think the, the the summary of it is: look for someone that already did it. Look for someone that achieved some previous results, and yeah. and, and and get help from them. Because most probably they have a, a, a some they have some way that already utilized it in the past yeah. to help and, you. And also think where you are in 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 the stage of your business. Because if you're going from maybe zero to a better version, there's someone that might be helpful for for you to work with, right? But if you're going from a better version to a commercial version, maybe there's someone else who's yeah. who's a better fit. Yep. And then if you if you want to go or if you're looking to grow from commercial to maybe a remarkable version there's even some someone someone else which is better right so you have to understand where you are uh, where we, where you want to go as well uh, to look for the to, to look for the right partner yep okay no no thank you so much it was a pleasure to have you here it was super nice to get your insights i hope you enjoyed it Man, and thank wish you, you all much. the best for you and for Widget Labs. Thank you so much, man. Have wish a good one. Wish you all one. the best as well. Thank you, Wish. Thank you. Bye See bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Adapt Podcast. Head on over to www.adaptmethodology.com slash scorecard to benchmark your ability as a leader to adapt your entire organization to the digital era. You will be able to identify plenty of opportunities for leveraged growth. 